Hello, hello friend. In this video, we are walking through the pathophysiology and signs and symptoms of the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, aka SIADH. Now, after this video, you will know what the common signs and symptoms are and why they happen. So you won't need to just memorize a list of symptoms for your nursing school exam. No, no, no. <laughs> but you will actually understand the critical thinking behind it. Because when was the last time your nursing exam has to do on how well you memorize things. Never, right? No, they just don't do that. So that's why we walk through the critical thinking behind it all. So you'll be a lot more confident for your nursing exam on SIADH after watching this video. And of course, I have a free cheat sheet to help you learn things faster in nursing school. So be sure to stay until the end of the video and I will let you know where you can snag that. Now hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell and let's dive in. All right, so syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, or SIADH for short, has everything to do with a hormone called ADH. And ADH stands for antidiuretic hormone, and ADH is released from the posterior pituitary gland. So let's break this down. Now, antidiuretic hormone, or ADH, is exactly what it sounds like. It's an antidiuretic, and diuretics make you urinate a lot. So ADH is anti diuretic hormone, meaning that you won't urinate a lot. So when ADH is released into the body, it goes and tells the kidneys to hold on to more water instead of urinating it out. So that is the role of ADH in the body. Now, there are two disorders that you need to know about that have to do with ADH. This one, SIADH, and another one called diabetes insipidus. They are opposites from each other. So here, during SIADH, there's too much ADH being released. Now let's look at the name one more time. Syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. It's inappropriately releasing antidiuretic hormone, or ADH, right? So during SIADH, there's too much ADH in the body. This could be caused by things like nervous system disorders or tumors. So normally, when the body has a low fluid volume, meaning that there isn't enough water in the body, ADH is released from the posterior pituitary gland, it travels down to the kidneys, and then the kidneys respond to it and hold on to more water rather than sending that water out into the urine. Now because ADH stands for anti-diuretic hormone, it prevents diuresis, so the kidneys hold on to more water. So the fluid volume in the body then goes up because of that increase in water. That is how ADH works. And here during SIADH, the posterior pituitary gland is releasing it even if the fluid volume isn't low. So even if the fluid volume in the body is totally fine, there still is too much ADH being released. You could see that this could cause a lot of water retention and increase fluid volume in the body. So let's put this into some easy steps for you to follow. Now these are not official steps that you will see in a textbook or anything. I just made these up to help make learning this way easier for you. So let's go through them. So step number one for the pathophysiology of SIADH. ADH is released from the posterior pituitary gland no matter what. Even if the fluid volume is high, doesn't matter. ADH is released. Step number two, ADH travels down to the kidneys. Step number three, the kidneys respond to the ADH and hold on to more water rather than sending it out into the urine. Step number four, the fluid volume in the body then goes up because of all that extra water that the kidneys are now holding onto. Now, step number five, the sodium level in the body will fall because the sodium is being diluted by all that extra water. Now, this is super key for you to know during SIADH. The sodium level in the body will be low, not because there is less sodium, but because there is just more water now diluting the sodium out. Makes sense, right? So even though there's the same amount of sodium in the blood as there was before, now there's so much more water. It just dilutes all that sodium, making the sodium level decrease in relation to that water level. So that is the pathophysiology of SIADH. Now step number one, ADH is released no matter what. Step number two, it floats down to the kidneys. Step number three, the kidneys respond to it by then holding onto more and more 
water. Step number four, the fluid vo volume in the body rises because of all that extra water. Step number five, the sodium level in the body then falls because it's being diluted by all of that water. Now, SIADH causes a lot of water retention. It causes the sodium level to drop. So let's keep those two things in mind as we go through these common signs and symptoms of SIADH, which are things like weight gain, increased blood pressure, increased heart rate and a bounding pulse, decreased urine output, concentrated urine, GI disturbances, things like nausea, vomiting, and a loss of appetite, a decrease in deep tendon reflexes, neurological or mental status changes, things like headaches, lethargy, confusion, seizures, and coma, low body temperature, or hypothermia. All right, so let's take a deeper dive into these signs and symptoms and understand really why they are happening and understand that critical thinking behind it all. Because let's be honest, that is what you are going to be tested on with your nursing exams, how well you can critically think about what you're learning and apply the information you're learning to a case scenario question in nursing school. So let's make sure that we fully understand why these signs and symptoms happen with SIADH. So obviously because the kidneys are holding on to a lot more water than they should, weight gain can happen simply because there is more water now in the body. Now remember, ADH tells the kidneys to hold on to water instead of sending it out into the urine and there's too much ADH being released. Now those two things combined lead to an increased fluid volume and a diluted lower sodium level. Now this increase in body water can also lead to higher blood pressure because of all that extra fluid. There is more fluid inside the blood vessels. Now again, remember more volume in the vessels creates more pressure and therefore the blood pressure increases. Now the patient may have an increased heart rate and a bounding pulse for that same reason. With more fluid inside the vessels, the heart rate can increase and the extra fluid inside the vessels can cause a bounding pulse and all that blood rushes through. Then of course, the patient will have a decrease in urine output because there is too much antidiuretic hormone being released. So again, the kidneys aren't letting enough water out into the urine. Anti diuretic, so holding on to water, which decreases urination. Now on top of this decrease in urine production, the urine that is made by the kidneys will be a lot more concentrated because it doesn't have a whole lot of water in it. So even though the urine output volume decreases, the urine that is made will be more concentrated. Now GI disturbances. Things like nausea, vomiting, and a loss of appetite, these things can happen because sodium is being diluted. Now with all that increase in water inside the body because of too much ADH, the sodium level decreases because it is getting diluted inside the blood. Sodium plays an important role in muscle contraction within the GI tract. So without it, GI muscles can't do their job effectively, which can lead to those GI symptoms. Now the same thing goes for deep tendon reflexes because sodium plays such a key role in muscle contraction. Without it, the muscles can't contract, so the patient may have diminished deep tendon reflexes. Now, sodium also plays a major role in neurological and mental status functions. So without enough sodium in the blood, the patient may have some mental status changes, things like headaches, lethargy, confusion, seizures, and even a coma. The shifts in fluid can also cause these neurological changes to happen because there is so much water in the body, it can actually shift into the cerebrospinal fluid and cause brain swelling. Now these changes in neurological function is also what causes the body temperature to change and possibly decrease. The central nervous system needs sodium and proper fluid balance to to function and do its job optimally. So when that sodium and the fluid levels are off, it's a, it has a hard time regulating temperature correctly, so the body temperature can decrease. So remember this, rule number one, learning the pathophysiology first makes learning these signs and symptoms and critical thinking through them a whole lot 
easier. Now, if you want to deep dive into the nursing interventions for SIADH, be sure to check out this video right here. Now, be sure to download the nursing school study checklist that I have for you that walks you through how to study in nursing school step by step. And if you liked this video, make sure to hit that like button, leave a comment below to let me know and share it with a friend. And of course, be sure to click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post a video and click on one of these videos right over here so you can keep rocking nursing school and go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I'll catch you next time on the nursing school show. Take care. Bye-bye.